Thank you very much again to Odette and Johannes for, for having me, Mariana and myself here this afternoon for this fascinating discussion. Um, I'm a composer and a sound artist, and now in my compositional practice, everything I do is uh, mediated in some way through technology. Uh, obviously, most of our lives, our everyday lives, are mediated through technology. But my particular practice is in uh, using recorded sound, live electronics, and more recently working in interdisciplinarity interdisciplinary way with, with dance and other art forms. Um, and something that attracted me to using sound, to using recorded sound in, in the broadest sense, was this idea of uh, referential association. So the ability to reference a particular space, a particular uh, acoustic space, or a particular scene, uh, and also, more deeply, to, to reference haptic qualities, and tactile qualities, textual properties through sound. So I always felt when I was composing electronic works alone that there was this kind of multimodality about, about those works. Um, and I was never sure whether it was just me or whether it was other people. And so by working with artists from other disciplines, I, I feel that that's opened a door into examining this idea of uh, multimodal appreciation of sound um, in a different light. So working with Maria has been really eye-opening at us, working with other dancers and in theatre, and with uh, work from moving images in order to highlight some of these properties within the sound world. students in Brazil, in which I will talk about the senses for, I don't know, 10, 10 meetings, for different texts, references, films, etc., about the five senses, and about synesthesia, and they will, they will prepare uh, seminars, experiential seminars for the whole class, one devoted to each sense, and we will discuss it.
some point, uh, the question came up of the, uh, the collaboration between scientists and artists. Why are we sitting together in the yeah. same conference? And I just wanted to comment on that, that I think we're just studying the senses from different point of views. Uh, it's, you're just looking, uh, artists are looking for what tickles the senses, uh, what works, what works is, you know, what tickles your senses. Uh, uh, scientists are trying to understand the, how the senses work in a different kind of way. Uh, they might put you in an MRI scanner and look inside your brain, but essentially the goal is similar, is to understand uh, you know, what, what works for the senses, what we find interesting, what we, what we perceive. I mean, some things we may not even see. You can design experiments uh, with conditions that uh, where, where you present stimuli that uh, half the people will not even notice certain lab conditions. Uh, it does happen in real life as well. Um, so... Could you say something about the paper or the research that you presented in Alcala? What was your topic when you were listening? And what? Yeah, I, I, I could, but I, I will have to start with a, an introduction to, to where this is coming from. Uh, I was actually taking it uh, one step further. I've been studying uh, synesthesia for uh, over a decade now. Um, and uh, one of the things that, uh, one of the ways that uh, neuroscientists have been explaining synesthesia is a fairly simple story. There are some extra connections between two sensory brain areas. If you connect your uh, visual cortex and auditory cortex, then you might experience auditory visual synesthesia. Or, uh, extra connections exist between two other areas, then you will experience a different kind of synesthesia. Uh, you can really generalize this. This has been shown for the first, it has been speculated for a hundred years. It has been shown directly in 2007 in a uh, paper using um, an, an MRI method called uh, diffusion tensor imaging, which images white matter and shows the existence of these extra connections. Contrast of the pill, contrast of the pill, cut out 
Interim Drawing Device called Tall Interim Drawing Device. <laughs> ah, do you need any advice? I can give you some advice. No, 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 yes. No, 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 yes. Yes, 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 no. Yes, 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 no. Keep your boundaries, shut your knees. Keep your boundaries, shut your knees. Sexuality, responsibility. Sexuality, responsibility. Just one quick comment. Um, I, I heard here uh, some very interesting uh, uh, the comments on how artists are using sound artists, and, and sound artists are something so fascinating. What I discovered writing this book, the fascinating artists called Space for Sound. Uh, what we've been talking about here, I've heard talk about, are artists who use science. I just want to give one example of uh, a case in which art, science, and dance, all uh, science, technology, and dance, all combine into one, and all help one another, so to speak. Uh, there's a uh, company called Dance Spectroscopy. I don't know if you've heard of them. Oh, you have? Great. Yeah, okay, okay. Well, I, yeah, uh, run by a uh, scientist at uh, Bristol University, David Glowacki, who is a theoretical chemist who deals with uh, simulating chemical reactions on a computer. And what he did was to work with a team of artists, scientists, and engineers to put together a dance routine which combines cutting edge interactive digital technology with digital art, I should say, with physics. And in it, dancers, you folks see the dancers, very beautiful. Dancers' motions are translated into uh, energy fields that actually interact with simulations of molecular dynamics. And this works the other way also in that the high speed algorithms that are cooked up for this dance routine actually have scientific relevance in that uh, they enable scientists to interactively manipulate chains of protein molecules to study how they fold, how they produce uh, organs in our bodies in ways that don't produce disastrous results. And this is a very nice example of, uh, of uh, a bonus, so to speak, on the frontier of, of fused scientific and artistic creativities. So it can also, it, one, also one need not only use science, but uh, it can be a, a symbiotic relationship between science, technology, and the arts. Comments, uh, dialogue, questions, please. Can I, can I answer? I think you asked some point in the early in the conversation you asked sort of why are we in the same room kind of what what are, what brings us uh, together and I think part of the answer and you asked is about artists and scientists so far. and I think the answer is not that all artists and all scientists it's about the people who came to this room but we are not just artists we are all artists who found themselves in universities because we're interested not just in doing a certain type of art or a certain way of doing art we're probably interested in examining our art practice and trying it to do So Diana was interested in breaking from what she was already doing and doing it through encounter with Maria. I was interested in working with performers because it raised the challenges of how to choreograph Pokemon's uh, feet with all the um, pets. And I think it's to a certain degree probably also the same true of the scientists, of, of people who arrived at this room from a science room. They were not just interested in uh, going into the lab, telling their PhD students, do that, do that, do that, and then write the next grant. They were actually interested in exploring things that are not kind of in the mainstream of their science practice.
Let's go.